Good evening from Houston, Texas. I'm Ed Cohen with Jay Williams. And Jay, this city home to the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome. We'll see on the floor who stands out tonight. I don't know about that, Ed. I may have to disagree with you on that. The eighth wonder of the world is the Red Rowdies. Let's get loud. Let's represent. Houston Rockets, what time is it? They are certainly impressive. Let's do this in Houston. Jay, when Westbrook has the ball, you know you can expect magic on the floor. The question everybody is trying to answer, can Russell Westbrook lead the Thunder to the promised land? He can, but he needs to take his game to new heights, and that comes with leadership. Everybody knows that he's a triple-double waiting to happen each and every night. He's done that consecutively for two years now in the NBA, the only player in the history of the league to do so. He's that fantastic of a player. I love the passion he plays with Ed, but he needs to get his teammates way more involved. When you have a guy like Paul George or Camelo Anthony, you have to make them better. Look how CP3 and James Harden, Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, Clint Capella, they all make each other better. There's something missing chemistry-wise from the Thunder. Man, are these two franchises invariably linked. Harden goes from Oklahoma City to Houston. Carmelo Anthony wanted to land in Houston. He gets traded by the Knicks to Oklahoma City. Go figure. And I'll be willing to say this too, Ed. I think Carmelo Anthony would be a way better player if you were playing for the Rockets than him playing for OKC right now. Gilchus Alexander. Knock loose. Rockets come up with it. It's early. Get a good quality shot here. Count the basket. Two more points in the paint. You can try and body him up, but he'll still run right through you. It's the way he attacks that makes him so dangerous. He chips off a piece of your body one possession at a time. First it's your arm, then it's your leg, and then inevitably it's your soul. Paul to Gilgis Alexander. Down low Adams. Five on the shot clock. Paul. His first effort off the mark. Great contest by the D, but I want to see the coaching staff call the same exact play the next possession. Get that offensive player the ball. Let him prove that it wasn't the D. It was more in his own head. Harden to Westbrook. Rockets with four to shoot. Can't connect from in close. That's how you do it. You stay in his pocket and you never give him any space at all. You make him smell you every single possession. Gordon with it. Lead is two. Harden matched up with Paul. They work it to Capella. Down low. And a throw down. Jay, I'm surprised. He had a chance to wrap him up. Well, you're not the only one surprised. This guy is not a good free throw shooter. You never let him have an easy bucket. If anything, make him earn it at the charity strike. To Gilgis Alexander. Wide open look won't go. Mm, this game is all about the small victories, though. The execution on that play was on point. You keep executing like that, those shots are going in eventually. And they called the foul. Jay, he was there too late. Hey, look, sometimes you need to feel out your opponent. Let him know you're there. I'm okay with that early foul. James Harden has got two shots coming. A career 85% free throw shooter. First one, count it. to back free throws here he missed the second here's Paul brings it up the floor surveys the floor Paul against the former MVP down to five down to four to shoot has a chance 
and a put back slam. And I got a chance to hear a lot of the conversation at the bench. And one of the things they called out was owning the backboards. Looks like the message is really getting through. Harden, he was all over him. Just because you're an elite shooter doesn't mean you need to shoot the ball every possession. Maybe give a head fake, crack it to the defender, get to the free throw line, see the ball go in the hole. Ball to Adams. Steven Adams with the slam. Some players are so cerebral. I'm not even paying attention to the dunk as much as I'm paying attention to the player pointing and communicating to everybody his team needs a guard on the next play down the court. Just inside the arc, at the buzzer. First quarter's complete. The Rockets with the lead. First quarter complete, on to the second period. A little bit of a feeling out process so far. Well, both teams had their rhythm. They established the tempo that they wanted to play at. But ultimately, something has to give. Some team has to draw a line in the sand. Throws it down. And when you get your prescription, you take your medicine and you call it a day. Here's Paul, controlling the offense. To Adams. Sizing up the defense. Big man, Steven Adams. He's 3 of 5, 60% shooting from the field. You feel that? I see the confidence building. To P.J. Tucker. Here comes the screen. Harden goes to the left side. To Harden. Beyond the arc for three. And James Harden, not sure why he was so wide open there. The challenge defending a guy who can be a one or a two. We're not old men talking about this game. We don't define players by positions anymore. Is he a one or is he a two? No, he's James Harden. He is a scorer and an elite passer. From the painted area, won't go down. Harden in possession. The score, 12 to 8. To P.J. Tucker. Westbrook. And that's going to get out of bounds off of Harden. Now Paul with the basketball. Trailing by four. Doesn't get the bounce. Harden with the basketball. Looking to make something happen to Capella. Clint Capella. Terrific shooting. He's four for five. Well, when you play for each other and not just for yourself, that's when great things happen. You essentially lose yourself in what the team is trying to accomplish. It's called unselfish basketball. And there's nothing more beautiful than rewarding your teammate with a nice pass and letting them finish for two or three points. Gordon with it. Up by six. To Harden. Fires the three. Not going down here. Paul across the timeline. Now down six. To Adams. Works it. Gilchus Alexander to Paul. Trying to cash in. Paul shot won't go down. Fires the three. Cleans it up. Big man, Steven Adams. Now four for nine. Ed, sometimes less is more. Keeping it simple is the best way. Harden in possession. 14-10 the score. To Westbrook. Here comes the screen. Russell Westbrook. Picked up by Adams. Gets it down to Capella. Good look that time, but off the mark. Another follow, still no good. To Paul. Down low, Gallinari. Oh, nice find for the basket. 
old school equals high percentage. Now it's Harden at the controls. Tucker defended by Robertson. To Westbrook. Harden. To P.J. Tucker. Westbrook. That one off the mark. It's no good. Another shot stays out. This for the tie. Yes. And the foul. And a chance at three coming up. And I love the smile on the face of the offensive player. Sometimes luck is on your side. I don't know how that shot went in, but and one. So we head to intermission all tied up in what's been a tight one from the start. Let's get you to Orlando where we say hello to Jalen Rose in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Jalen. Thanks, Ed. And while it's not a big deficit, they should pretend like they're getting blown out. They benefit from that kind of mentality in the second half. These are the guys getting buckets. The Thunder are all tied up on the scoreboard after two quarters. And these guys have every reason to feel good about how they scored effectively in that opening half. Great offensive display. These are the guys getting buckets. Game track. Rebounds. The second efforts from these squads have been phenomenal with plenty of offensive rebounds between them. It makes you wonder, though, where's the second effort on the defensive half of the court? That's the side that can use some improvement for both of these teams. Player of the half. I'm ready to skip ahead and just get this guy player of the game. You can tell. He's on his way to a special game. Here we go with the top plays from the first half. Number two. Number one. Fellas, back to you. All even to the first half of play as we get rolling once again here in the third quarter. And now Houston has the basketball. Oh, Russell Westbrook. Quiet night, but two for three in the contest right now. The inner beast of Westbrook. Sheer determination. Mm, mm, mm. I don't think anybody got the license plate or not hit and run. And there is no one, I repeat, I, I, no I, one I, in the game of basketball with the first step in the explosion of Russell Westbrook. Layup goes down. Well done. There are certain guys in this league that should be put on alert status 24-7 because either they're posterizing you or that attempt can still be a poster. Screen coming to P.J. Tucker. Harden, down low Capella, and throws it down. It's that easy, Ed. You never want to leave any doubt when attacking the rim. Paul with it up top. His group now down two. Defense! 
to Gilgis Alexander. Nothing going here on that drive. Here comes the screen. Gilgis Alexander. Couldn't keep it in. Out off Danilo Gallinari. Westbrook with it. Two-point advantage. Harden matched up with Steven Adams. To Capella. Ah, the monster stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Nice finish. It's all business. With the rock, it's Chris Paul. Nothing going here on that drive. Gilchis Alexander. Down low, Gallinari. Rebound for Capella. Westbrook into the front court. They lead it. Four-point game. Deep two there. Won't go. On the follow. Way to stay with it. And the true test of a team's character is how they respond when they get hit in the mouth. Keep digging. Gilchis Alexander. Ah, oh, you've got to get that one to go. Westbrook into the front court. Up six. To Harden. Nothing going here on that drive. James Harden. Tough shooting. Only two for six after that make. Attack mode isn't a switch that you can just turn on and off. He needs to do more of that. We need to see him penetrate, get into that lane, and create. Gilchis Alexander to Paul. Uh, he was smothered and still gets it to go down. There's a sixth sense there that you just can't teach. If you're a player on the same team with CP3, you should be taking that point guard out to dinner every single night. There's something to be said about a guard that makes the game way easier for you to be even more of an efficient offensive player. Paul into the front court. The deficit is six. Gilchis Alexander to Paul. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Now Adams down low. A oh, big finish at the rim. Neither side is giving up an inch. I guarantee you tomorrow on Complex's social feed, that play will have millions of views. And I'm really looking forward to this fourth quarter because the first three have lived up to the billing. James Harden. Oh, three for eight. He's got to do better. You normally don't see that, but that's the type of thing that keeps shooters in the league for a long time. Every once in a while, they venture into the paint. Nice pace, sets it up, and slams it down. Whoa, he got up there. Just showing you that 40-inch vertical. Just inside the arc, at the buzzer, and the Thunder with the rebound. Three quarters down with the Rockets in front. The Thunder have it to start the fourth quarter. They trail to this point, but you'd have to say this one's up for grabs. And the new style we play with in this league, all it takes is three quick threes, and you're right back in the ballgame. It's Paul for two. Gets a look. Can't hit. Your contest was great because of your proximity to the player. You forced his follow-through to be cut short, which made him short-arm the shot. Harden guarded by Robertson. Steven Adams! Huge block! That's why a rim protector is a necessity in this game. Down for Robertson. Eric Gordon swats it! You know, sometimes basketball can become a very beautiful thing to watch. During the regular season, things can get difficult. Energy can be low. The passion at times can even be lower because players are tired. They're fatigued. But today, it's all been good. They're putting in an absolute show with killer efficiency and tremendous effort and intensity. from the post. 
You've heard it before. Slow and steady wins the race. This approach might be working out after all. Westbrook with the basketball. Leads four. Steven Adams with the block. Oh, he blocked that with authority. Oklahoma City's got it. Hall against Westbrook. To Gilgis Alexander. Right, right, right. That's what you like to see off the pick and roll. Nice, easy basket. Look at that. Calm under pressure. You see a lot of guys rush those. Nice extra move there. Westbrook across the timeline. Leads a bucket. Down low, it's Gordon. Shot from the lane. Won't go. To Adams. With a drop step. Gets a shot up off the mark. Westbrook with it. The lead is two to Harden. Oh, highlight moves. Tough to do with the defender all over you. Nothing's going to stop him in pursuit of the basketball. Robertson against Gordon. Leaving no doubt. Slams it down. The defender needs to do a better job of forcing a pickup there. James Harden at the controls. Takes it right to the rim. A lot of contact there, but they say no foul. That might have been a little bit easier than expected there, considering the score. Russell Westbrook guarded by CP3. Harden into the front court. He'll run the offense. Has a look. With the step back. Man, he's got the defender out there tap dancing like that on national TV. That's not a good sign. Paul into the front court. His guys trail now by four. To Adams. From the painted area, won't go down. What happened is he didn't bounce himself off the defender. He didn't initiate contact. He allowed the contact to initiate him. We could break that down later in the broadcast, but that's why he missed that easy chip. Nothing going here on that drive. Gilchus Alexander to Paul. The Thunder down to four in the shot clock. Chance for Paul. Rebounded by Capella. There's the whistle and an intentional foul. Just their first in the final two minutes, so no free throws yet. They'll take the ball out of bounds. Good foul right there. You want to stop the clock. And an intentional foul here in the closing moments, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference in what is now a two-score game. Ed, what's that old saying? Ruffle feathers do not flock together? Well, actually, I just made that up. But what it means is that play will cause a little havoc. As designed, the team that uses it to galvanize as a unit will have the advantage. Good free throw shooting. Knocks down a pair. The Thunder will use a timeout. It's their first of the final three minutes. That leaves them with one more chance to stop the clock before the buzzer sounds.
Paul here against P.J. Tucker, 19-footer at the buzzer. It's the Rockets who are victorious as they take care of business at home. For Jay Williams and all our crew, I'm Ed Cohen saying so long for now. This has been a presentation of the NBA on EA Sports. Hey everyone, it's Jalen Rose, and it's time for the EA Sports post game wrap up. The Rockets were solid in today's victory, and the way they attacked the rim was outstanding. Not only is the dunk a high percentage shot, it's also a great way to test the confidence of the defense. What you see here is how the majority of the points were scored for the Houston Rockets. The Thunder put up a fight, but didn't get their hands raised at the end. I'm sure they can't help but feel frustrated with the result, but they can't let that feeling linger. Sooner than later, they need to start thinking about the next matchup. Here are the guys who put up the most points for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Game Stats. Player of the game. And while you can't track leadership on a stat sheet, it was by far the most impressive thing he did in this game. Who was cold? Every player that makes it to the NBA is a great athlete, but even the best players have their off nights. Today was just one of those days for this guy. These are the top plays of the game. Number two. Number one. And that does it for our post-game wrap-up. On behalf of ESPN on EA Sports, I'm Jalen Rose. Thanks for joining us.